Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series where we review every single Capcom CP system, CP System Dash, CPS2, and CPS3 game ever made, and today we're taking a look at UN Squadron. This may come later in the series because it's alphabetical, but this is basically the prequel to Carrier Air Wings. It came out a year before, and Carrier Air Wings is more considered a spiritual successor, but there's a lot of similarities between both games. Before we get too far involved there, do me a huge favor, go down below and hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps me out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down there as well. But you'll see as my character portrait at the top shows, I'm pretty sure this is Mario as a fighter pilot. Looks like him, kind of sounds like him, so we're just going to call him Mario for the rest of the game. But as you can clearly tell, it's another shmup on the Capcom play system. It is a really good shmup though, and it's a horizontal one. And generally I prefer vertical shmups more than I do horizontal shmups. But I really enjoy UN Squadron. It's got a lot of fun. The power-up and special system is really nice. And in between stages, you can really kind of pick and choose how you want to pursue the next area. Because keeping your special attacks for the boss is so crucial in this game. You can take a boss encounter and make it really easy if you pick the right special moves and you keep them till the boss. And you can make a boss battle really hard if you use all of those special attacks too early or pick something that's not really conducive for the next boss battle. It kind of reminds me of Mega Man where after you beat each robot master you get a new move and if you play the game in the quote unquote right order it can be easier. It's the same kind of mechanic here because you'll see we have so much money and we have so much options for what we'd like to bring into the next stage and you can totally make the game easier or harder depending on whether or not you know what weapon is going to be useful for that next boss. But moving right into stage two, I love the graphics and all the parallax scrolling in this game. It looks like we're just in between two cloud layers and when that lightning strike hits, the entire screen lights up. So a game for 1989, this looks, plays, and sounds really good. And you can do a lot worse for horizontal shmups on any system than UN Squadron. I would say as far as how hard the game is, it's probably one of the easier shmups I've played just because of that weapon system if you know what to use the bosses can become trivial and that's kind of fun as far as a mechanics concerned knowing the game well enough to know how to basically play against it because you'll see here we have this stealth bomber coming in and it's really not that hard of a battle whatsoever because we've saved all those phoenix missiles to this point in time and we're just going to absolutely unload on the boss and it's going to make it that much easier if we just used our normal projectile weapons, it's not going to be that much harder, but beating this boss with those special weapons just makes it, you know, I did take one hit there for the capture. It's hard to play these games because there is a slight lag when I'm capturing them, but honestly, if I didn't have the capture device involved, I don't even think I would have taken that hit, and that's why your weapon selection is so important. But the music in this game is also some of my favorite music in a shmup. I may be the only person that says that, who knows. But go ahead and listen for about 45 seconds to a minute, and I'll come back and convince you that if you haven't played UN Squadron yet, you should definitely do it today. Be right back. sure why I like the soundtrack so much because it's probably objectively not the best soundtrack in a shmup ever but it kind of sounds like a hokey schlocky 80s b-movie action soundtrack something that Jean-Claude Van Damme would have starred in but I do love for the boss battle here you actually change direction your plane comes back around and you'll see that the laser that we have allows us to shoot in a downward direction so as we're flying over things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to hit with our direct projectile it gives us the advantage of being able to shoot down and up at the same time and now you'll see that we brought napalm into the next stage and you'll see why we use that very shortly 
but I love that each individual stage feels so unique and you do get some story elements between each one. I showed one at the beginning, but I cut them out just kind of for runtime. But I love that we're now in this like really tropical orange glowing desert area and we have these pillars in the front that we can fly behind. Gives it a nice graphical look with that sunset in the background, the color gradient going from blue to that deep orange. So visually I think the game is outstanding. Again, it has the classic Capcom thing that they did with the CP system, where when you get low on health, you get that terribly annoying buzzer going on, and they stopped doing that pretty much in the Capcom CPS System 2 games, and I really appreciate that because it just drives me nuts. But now you'll see here we're getting onto this large missile tank with these gigantic treads, and again, we have that napalm, and you're going to see that it's going to come in very useful when we decide to use it. It's going to make this boss battle a lot quicker because we can just start dropping those napalm bombs down on those turrets that come out and those are shooting directly across the screen so if we were down there trying to hit it with our usual weapon we'd be right in the path of those missiles but because of the napalm bombs we're able to just continually drop those on the boss while we stay out of most of harm's way and those napalm bombs do travel across the screen so it causes a lot of damage to a lot of different areas and you'll see we were able to not take any hits once those turrets started popping up and that napalm basically saved us now moving on to mission five, you're going to get a little information about what you're doing. And I do like these cutscenes, and it's going to pop you over into the shop and give you an option on what you want to bring into the next area. And like I said, this game has a lot of replayability because you can make it easier or harder on yourself depending on that special. And I played this game before where I just decide not to bring the special into the next area. Now, weirdly, the game will sometimes change its own mechanics. In the last stage, we were able to fly behind those pillars, and there was no big deal. In this stage, those pillars are actually solid, and if you get stuck behind them, you will take damage. You can break them apart with your weapons, but it's one instance in this game where usually when a game lets you do something and it teaches you how it works, it doesn't like to change that formula up too much. In this instance, though, it does, and you get a little bit confused and take some unfair damage, so maybe that's my only complaint. But you didn't get to hear much of the soundtrack the first time around, so take another 30 seconds. I love this track too, and I'll be back to close out the video on UN Squadron. I guess now that I think about it, the more I say it, it might make the game slightly too easy preserving your special attacks to the boss because you have a couple options and if you know which ones to pick in between stages, you can make the boss fights feel a little bit too inconsequential. But honestly, if you're going for one credit continue, it's a great way to be able to pull it off. And I do like now that we've moved a little bit further into the game, the game slows itself down a little bit. Now we're not just dealing with enemies in front of us, but we also have to navigate the world around us. And you'll see there I took a death. That was intentional to get rid of that buzzing noise for the capture. But you really have to worry about what's in front of you and you need to navigate the plane through all of these real tight areas to make sure that you can continue on. And I do like that, that it basically makes the environment its own opponent. Sometimes shmups that are just completely open with none of that can feel a little bit just like I have to beat up some bullets. And you'll see here, you do have to knock that path loose. But short of that, that is UN Squadron, basically the game that came before Carrier Air Wings. If you've never played it before and you like shmups, I can't recommend it enough. If you have played it, I'd love to hear your opinion, so leave me a comment down below. But we'll be back next week with another episode in our Capcom review series, and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. We do a bunch now, so just stay tuned for those. But like I said, if you played this game, leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. Because I have the feeling that my love for this game may not be shared along with everybody else. Sometimes I really like games that people think are just decent, and sometimes I think games that are loved by everybody are just decent, so it's always fun to hear what your guys' opinions are. Short of that, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. Otherwise, we will be back next week, and we're getting real close to the end of the Capcom play system stuff, and we're going to be moving on to the dash shortly. Short of that, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.